Blocking bad links on a website is incredibly important. And if you don't take the time to do it, you could have this veil cast over your website where the traffic just goes down and down and down and down and you wouldn't even know it. Hi everybody, I'm John Lincoln with Ignite Visibility and today I'm gonna give you my 10 step process for blocking links on a website and doing it correctly so that it doesn't hurt your rankings, it helps your rankings. Let's go ahead and dive into it. Okay, so the first thing I wanna know is if you have blocked links on your website, put a yes below. If you have not ever blocked links pointing at your website, put a no. I wanna see how many people have actually taken the time to do this. So what you need to know is there's something in Google Search Console that allows you to block other links from pointing at your website. It's called the disavow file. And if you just Google, Google disavow file, you're going to be taken to the area to see if you have a disavow file. You'll log in through Google Search Console. It'll take you to that tool. You'll be able to see if there's a file in place for your website. If there's not a file in place, you're not blocking any links to your website. If there is a file in place, then you are blocking some links to your website. And it's probably a good idea if you go ahead and open up that file and take a look at it and see what's in it, just so you know what you're blocking and what you're not. So why would you wanna block links? Well, you wanna block links because you only wanna be associated with good websites online and if there's a lot of really bad sites linking to you that can really really hurt your rankings when it comes to search engine optimization so blocking links is a very SEO specific task and something that every website should do especially big websites should do either on a bi-weekly or a monthly basis to make it so that you have the best rankings and other sites aren't hurting you okay so when it comes to blocking links you need to create this disavow file and this file is a text-based file that you upload to the Google disavow tool and then what happens is Google will discount those links from your overall rankings on your website so if you upload this file it's gonna tell Google to either block an entire domain from having any credibility linking to you or block an individual URL. Those are the two kind of most popular ways of doing it. So you can block it on the page level. So if one page is linking to your website or on the domain level, you can block an entire domain. And it's up to you if you wanna block an entire domain or a page. In most cases, you're gonna want to block an entire domain because if you're blocking just an individual page, then you probably want to just block the entire domain too because it's all on the same domain. If it's a spammy page, it's probably a spammy domain. In most cases, there might be some outliers. So let's jump into these 10 things. So the first thing that you need to know is once you've blocked a lot of different domains uh, from different websites, the same sites just keep showing up over and over again. Some of the ones I see are .xyz random sites, usually odd domain name extensions will come up a lot. Uh, you'll see a lot of scraper websites that come up on a continual basis, but there's always kind of this trend of bad sites that show up in most people's disavow files or who people or most people want to put into their disavow file. Next thing is high page rank doesn't necessarily mean that it's a link from a good website. So I think a lot of people feel that if it's high page rank or high domain authority and you're looking at one of these third party tools that it's a good link, but that not might not be the case. For example, you could have a site that's showing really high domain authority in Moz, but if you actually go to the site, it's been hacked, you know, it's got, um, you know, some, some weird spam going on there, or it's an adult site or something like that, and, and you don't want links from sites that have major, major issues that, that you don't want to be associated with. So, Unfortunately, high domain authority, you know, from one of these third party tools does not mean that it's a good link right off the bat. It just doesn't. Okay, so the next thing you need to do is block all the bad links. If you have a website that's got a thousand links or 20,000 links and you just go in and you block one or two, that's not gonna do anything. You need to be blocking chunks of links pointing at your website. So, you know, hundreds or thousands, you know, almost every website has a very large chunk of poor links that are pointing at it. So if you're just taking the time to block one or two and you've got three or four you know, total in your disavow file, it's pretty much worthless. You need to be more aggressive than that. But here's the tricky part, you don't wanna to be too aggressive because you don't wanna block anything that's hurting you and I'll get into that a little bit. So a couple things to look for when you're looking at these links. 
Um, one of the first things you'll want to do is you want to take a look at an individual link and see if when you land on that page, there's a lot of links on that page going to other websites with exact anchor text. So what that means is the anchor text of the link might have an exact keyword in it. So if somebody's trying to get ranked for payday loans and there's a term in there for payday loans that goes straight to a payday loan site, that's kind of a red flag, right? If there's another one that's a link in the same post for grocery coupons and it's going to a grocery coupon site, that would be another red flag. So keep an eye out for exact anchor text. Another thing to look for is off topic websites. So if a website's linking to you and they have no reason to link to you, it's a complete different topic maybe you're in health and beauty and this is a technology website and it's totally unrelated link it just looks like it, it makes no sense that's definitely gonna be a red flag as well okay while this is not always the case usually sites that are in a different language are not good especially if you're a smaller domestic company and you don't really operate in different languages or outside of your country so if you've got websites that are linking to you from all around the globe in lots of different languages you might want to dig into those a little bit more because there's a good ch chance that they're probably just spammy. Another thing is it doesn't matter how good the website looks. It might be the most beautiful site in the world, but it could have a penalty on it. So it doesn't matter if it's just aesthetically pleasing. If you go to the site and there's a security warning, you know, something pops up that says security risk, you know, with this site, that's usually a red flag. That's usually a link that you don't want. Okay, I strongly believe that third party tools can be a great indicator of a high quality or low quality site. So one of the things I'll do is use a tool like SEMrush and I'll see if things are trending up or trending down. And if I come to a website and I put in a link for the person who's linking to me and I see that this page you know, used to rank really, really well, you know, a couple years ago, but now it's down to a zero, or this domain ranked really, really well a couple years ago, and now it's down to a zero, then if that's the case, then I know that that's probably a bad link. That's not the only thing to look for, but um, it is one that's important. Okay, so if you're gonna block an individual URL, you just put in the URL on one line on this text file, right, .txt. If you wanna block an entire domain, you put in domain, all lowercase, semicolon, and then you put in the domain without any subdomain or anything. So it would be domain semicolon example.com. And then that's going to tell Google to disavow all links from that domain. Or if it was just the individual URL, just that individual URL. Also, it's important to note that you can comment things out by putting in a hashtag. So any hashtag, anything right after that is going to be commented out. And you can use that to keep notes within the disavow file. Okay, if you want to go look at your disavow file now, you can go to google.com forward slash webmaster forward slash tools forward slash disavow links main uh, disavow dash links dash main that's the url where this lives so you can go there and then you can log in and see if you have something all right the last thing that i wanted to say today is really the best thing you can do is get these bad links taken down there's some great tools out there that will allow you to do outreach and then keep track of how many people have taken links down and then how many people have kept links up. And if you configure this really you know, big list of bad links, it's usually a good idea to start by trying to get them all taken down um, so that you just don't have them hanging out there. You don't really want that hanging over your head. After that, a secondary option that's great is the disavow file. And I recommend that people use this and update that disavow file on a bi-weekly or a monthly basis. If you like this video, give me a like. I would really appreciate it, give me a comment. Tell me if you're going to go ahead and disavow your links. Thanks so much for watching. Have a great day. See you next time.